Hello everyone, welcome to Good Morning America Health. I'm Tanya Rivero. There is some promising new news in the field of HIV and AIDS research. Scientists have discovered two <coughs> naturally occurring human antibodies with the potential to protect us from 90% of known HIV strands, leading many to believe an HIV vaccine will be discovered in the near future. Vanderbilt University infectious disease specialist, Dr. William Schaffner, joins us now from Nashville with more on these advancements. Hi there, Dr. Schaffner, great to see you. Hello, Tanya. Good to be with you always. So should we now have hope that these antibodies will lead to an HIV vaccine? Well, I have my fingers crossed. You know, the question is, why don't we have an HIV vaccine yet? And there have been two huge scientific problems. If you can think of vaccines pre uh, creating prevention that's like a lock that's going to go, uh, a key that's going to go into a lock, the first problem is that the HIV virus has protected that lock. And the scientists now have figured out a way to get that key into the lock. Now the second problem that they've had is, like the influenza virus, the HIV virus changes very, very frequently. So just as you've created a key that goes into one lock, the lock changes. But they have figured out a way such that they can identify something that's common among all the HIV locks, as it were. So it looks as though they can create, at least in this early laboratory study, a means of pr protection such that the body's antibodies can actually link up with the HIV virus and neutralize them. And these are early days. Uh, but these are particular antibodies that are exciting. Is that right, doctor? Because other antibodies had been discovered, but they didn't turn out so well. Is that right? Exactly. Exactly. Exactly, Tanya. Most of the time when human beings make antibodies, uh, they can't find the right lock to go into. And what they, the scientists, this has been a very elaborate investigation, have found antibodies that can work their way through the protection and get into that lock, and they think that they can reproduce this, perhaps, in the form of a vaccine, such that it would be a more generalizable phenomenon. It's fantastic. I mean, we know, as you just said, that this research is still in the very early stages, but is there any speculation as to whether or not this would also help people who are already infected with the virus? Yeah, and that's also a possibility that has my fingers crossed, because once infected, if we could at least contain the virus mm -hmm. so it doesn't keep damaging people, well then, that would be another form of treatment. So perhaps we have a two-pronged strategy here, a strategy that would protect against initial infection and also, once infected, prevent expansion of the virus. A lot so, to hope for here, for sure. Now, uh, doctor, this research is very specific, but will these latest advancements perhaps help with other vaccines scientists have been working on? Well, we've been trying to do something similar with the influenza virus, and science is generalizable. This is uh, focused just on HIV, but scientists learn from each other. So that's a double fingers crossed that perhaps what's learned here could have a more generalizable effect and give us vaccines in other areas that we're also seeking. Hopefully that will be the case. Now, in other HIV and AIDS news, the U.S. government recently announced it is setting aside $25 million to purchase AIDS drugs. It's been difficult lately for many people to get the medicines they need. Are there actually waiting lists for many of these drugs? Yeah, Tanya, I'm, I'm afraid there are. You know, with our economic downturn, people have lost their medical insurance. And so there are people with HIV infection who previously were covered who now are not. And they're on waiting lists trying to get the drugs uh, that can keep them healthy. That's as though people with diabetes are out there waiting to get their drugs, their insulin, to keep them healthy. So this is uh, a great first step. We need the, those extra monies, uh, but more needs to be done. And in your opinion, has the length and quality of life continued to improve for those who are infected with HIV and who have access to these drugs? It's been remarkable. These drugs appropriately applied with uh, careful people who know how to uh, manage these treatments can really restore health to people. They can become fully functional. They can work, they can pay taxes, uh, they can live in our societies and they have a life expectancy that looks to be uh, quite comparable to people who are uninfected.
it's so amazing. It's, the drugs are very important. Very, very important and incredible that they can uh, can have that hope. And finally, to end back on the antibodies that we're talking about at, at the beginning, how long do you think people will have to wait before we see the science make it to that next level? Yeah, that's uh, commonly asked questions, and I would think it will take longer rather than shorter. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you, these results have turned on the lights in the laboratories at night. There are people all across the country now that are looking at these results and getting ideas from them and trying to apply them in their own laboratories to help develop a vaccine. That's so let's all keep our fingers crossed, but remain optimistic. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much, Dr. Schaffner. Always a pleasure, Tanya. And don't forget, you can find the latest medical news at the health page of abcnews.com.